My name is Pat Cunningham, and today I want to talk with you about fluency. Before we begin, however, I would like you to close your eyes and imagine you're listening to one of your best readers read. What does she sound like? Does she read at an appropriate rate? Not too fast, but not too slow. Does she identify the words quickly and accurately? Does her voice rise and fall and pause at appropriate places? Next, I want you to imagine you're listening to one of your struggling readers read. Does she read one word at a time? Does she ha hesitate before saying some words and repeat, repeat others? Does her voice go up and down? And does she pause between phrases? Fluency is a little like love. It is not easily defined, but we all know it when we hear it. Today, I'm going to suggest some activities to help all your students become fluent readers, regardless of what level they read on. But first, I need you to read this short passage aloud one time. How did you do? I imagine that you could read it, but how did you sound? Did you read words one at a time? When you finished, were you glad it was over? How good was your comprehension? Look again at these two sentences written as you normally see them. If you read it this time effortlessly and understood what you were reading, you understand why fluency is described as the bridge between word identification and comprehension. In order to comprehend what you are reading, your brain must identify most words quickly and automatically without thinking about them. This frees up your brain to think about what the words mean, not just what the words are. To become good readers, all children must develop the ability to read most words quickly and automatically, and to read in phrases with appropriate expression. In the remainder of this talk, I'm going to suggest some time-tested and research-based practices you can use in your classroom to assure that all your students become fluent readers, regardless of what level they read on. The first and most important thing you can do is to make sure everyone is doing some easy reading. The best readers in your class spend most of their time reading things below their reading level. When they are reading, they meet only an occasional word they have to decode, and all their thinking power is available for thinking about and enjoying what they're reading. The trick is to get your struggling readers reading easy things without insulting them. To get your struggling readers willing to read things that are easy for them, consider these three possibilities. Easy informational books. There are several series of informational books, some by um, National Geographic, and some by Scholastic, and some by HarperCollins, and probably others. And these books are fairly easy to read because they don't have a lot of text and they've got pictures in them, but they're not as insulting to kids because they teach them things and they find them interesting. Magazines. Boys prefer magazines to books. So if you can get a classroom subscription to Ranger Rick, National Geographic for Kids, Sports Illustrated for Kids, or any other magazines your students will enjoy, they will willingly read these easier materials. Finally, consider partnering with a kindergarten teacher and have your students read, have your students read to them once a week. Your oldest students will be perfectly willing to read Dr. Seuss and other easy books because they are practicing so they can read to their little buddies. The second thing you can do 
is to make sure your students have regular opportunities to participate in fluent oral reading. If you have been sacrificing your teacher read aloud time because of test pressure, you might want to rethink that. Reading aloud to your students is a time-honored way to motivate students to read and a chance for you to model expressive oral reading. Two more forgotten activities you can incorporate into your day to be sure your students are participated in fluent oral reading are echo reading and choral reading. Plays and poetry are made to order for echo and choral reading. First, you lead the class in an echo reading. Your teacher voices the model and your students try to echo it exactly. Then children meet in small groups and they practice their play roles or their poem verses. Finally, the whole class assembles for a choral reading. Favorite poems like Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed, The Itsy Bitsy Spider, Five Little Pumpkins are perfect poems for echo and choral reading with younger children. The internet is full of sites with delightful poetry for older children. Two of my favorite sites are Giggle Poetry and Ken Nesbitt's Poetry Site. Ken Nesbitt, a former children's poet laureate, will even email you a new funny poem each week. Finally, you and your students can write scripts for stories your children have particularly enjoyed. Here is the beginnings of a script I wrote for the little red hen and one I found on the internet for Tacky the Penguin. When you include echo and choral reading of plays and poetry, your students will be doing lots of repeated reading. That's the third activity proven to be effective in helping children become fluent readers. Reading something three times because you have to is not very motivating. Echo and choral reading of plays and poetry results in multiple readings of the same text, and it's a lot more fun. So, to become good readers, children must develop oral reading fluency. It is the bridge between word identification and comprehension. To help all your students read fluently regardless of their reading level, first, mandate easy reading for all, but don't call it that. Model good expressive reading in your teacher read aloud, and make echo and choral reading of plays and poetry a regular part of your classroom.